meeting for Thursday, March 13th, is now in order. Let's have a moment of silence and then stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You call the roll. Frederick McCoy. Andrew Pinelli. Here. Ms. Sheriff Bruce. Here. Julius Wiegand. Bernard James. Here. Marie Davis. Here. Brian Colton. Here. Kimberly Jackson. Here. Arthur Hamilton. Here. Sir Chairperson Collins present. Jeff, question. Do both alternates have voting rights? Um, yes, I'd ask for tonight's meeting um, because both uh, Mr. McCoy and Mr. Wiggum will not be present tonight. Um, and also, uh, Ms. James, her term previously expired, and that item is going to our council meeting um, I believe next week. So because of those voids, we would ask that both the first and second alternate have voting rights for tonight's meeting. Okay, let the uh, record reflect that. Any additions, deletions to the agenda? No additions or deletions. Okay. Uh, if there's no objection, I'll have a motion for adopting the agenda for today. Second. Call the roll. Edward Kennedy? Yes. Ms. Sheriff Bruce? Yes. Murray Davis? Yes. Brian Fulton? Yes. Kimberly Jackson? Yes. Arthur Hamilton? Yes. And it was a voting motion approved. Okay. Okay, approval of the minutes from February 27th. Motion? I make the motion to approve the minutes. Second. Call, call the roll. Edward Canoni? Yes. Ms. Sheriff Bruce? Yes. Murray Davis? Yes. Brian Colton? Yes. Kimberly Jackson? Yes. Arthur Hamilton? Yes. And anyone else voting? Motion approved. Okay. Uh, no presentations, I assume. Okay. No, no unfinished. No unfinished business. That's correct. Okay. Move to new business. Uh, yes. Uh, for the record, Jeff Gagnon, Planning and Zoning Administrator. Um, under new business tonight, we have one item. Um, that's SP 1404, an application from Rapids Holdings LLC requesting a site plan amendment for the Rapids Water Park, including the construction of an 800 square foot, 65 seat tiki bar structure, and authorization to sell alcohol throughout the Rapids Water Park. And it's located at 6566 North Military Trail on roughly 24.3 acres. Um, also joining us tonight, um, there are two representatives from Rapids Water Park. I've been working most closely with uh, Mr. Christopher Jones, uh, architect. Uh, but of course, after the staff presentation, um, they're, if they want to add anything else, and if they have, uh, if the board has any questions, uh, as well as your to ask those questions of staff for the group here tonight for Rapids. Uh, so moving on 
in this slide. This is just the case number and um, information that was just read in the record. Um, so here is an aerial view. Um, just give you a, an orientation. This is Interstate 95. This is Beeline Highway. Um, this is Glenair Boulevard. This is 45th Street. North and south is North Military Trail. And the red box here indicates the location of uh, Rapids Water Park. So panning a little closer, uh, you can see the orientation of the Rapids Water Park here. Uh, you can start seeing some of the slide structures. We have park to the south. Um, additionally, to the west is um, Lone Pine Golf Course, as well as um, residential units. To the east is um, an RV uh, park. Um, directly to the north and to the south are commercial retail and office site uses. And again, the red box indicates the location. So thanks to Google Earth, we'll get any closer. And the location that the red box shows here is the proposed location for the new 800 square foot Tiki Hut. Um, it will be adjacent to, this is the, the wave pool. Um, and again, this is north-south military trail. So going from the pretty color aerial, to the black and white site plan. Just to give you that orientation again, this is the area that was just shown, um, except this is north, the left would be north. So this is military trail, <coughs> north to south. Um, this would be the upper image. The lower image, north is up. So this is the wave pool to the left, and this is a new 800 square foot uh, TP structure. Uh, it's supposed to have 65 seats. So this is the architectural elevation of the Tiki Hut itself. Um, and you can start seeing the seating pattern, the main bar area, um, the wave pool would be to the right of this image, and then elevations of the, the structure itself. Um, again, compared to the entire site, it's a relatively small structure, it's only 800 square feet. Um, but I just wanted to give you uh, proper orientation. So before we get into the final staff recommendation, I just wanted to read over a few items on the staff report. Then, according to the project narrative that was provided by the applicant, 
Rapids Water Park is seeking to obtain a liquor license in response to increasingly frequent requests from its customers and as part of its long-term strategy to increase food and beverage sales and to attempt to maintain its attendance base in the increasingly competitive Florida leisure market. And, of course, the board members can read on. That was included in the narrative, which is in the full staff packet. So the staff recommendation for SB 1404, staff does not receive any concerns at this point in association with the site plan amendment or request for alcohol sales throughout the Rapids Water Park. Staff advises that the Planning and Zoning Board recommend approval of the site plan amendment to the City Council with the three following conditions. And the three conditions that are shown on the screen are all code-based conditions. It's nothing out of the ordinary. Condition number one is that construction must be initiated within 18 months. I know that won't be a problem as the applicant is ready to get going as soon as possible. Additionally, number two, all future advertising must adhere to the City Code of Ordinances, Section 31-554, which is advertising in Rainier Beach. This requires if a city or municipality is used in advertisement, they must stay in Rainier Beach. Finally, condition number three, any new lighting elements must be installed in a manner that prevents light trespass from the property. So at this point, I'll open up the floor to comments. Does the applicant want to make any comments before we start? Please introduce yourself to the record. Thank you. My name is Chris Jones. I'm the architect for the project and the agent for the owners. With me is Mr. Karen Burke, the owner of the LLC Holdings. To the side is Brian McGrath, who is the general manager of the Rapids Water Park and has been so for 30 years. And John Paxman, who is our liquor license attorney, in case you had any other questions concerning the liquor license itself. Primarily, what we've just been over is the crux of what we're trying to do here is to create facilities within the park to be able to sell liquor to help keep our park competitive with all the major parks, Wet n Wild, SeaWorld, Aquatica, Universals, they're all the same. So it's not unusual for parks to have liquor. In fact, they all do. We're one of the few or one of the only ones that don't have liquor in the park. And so with the increasing competitive market, we're trying to create an atmosphere that then becomes more resort-like in order to help bring in more business as a whole, and especially tourism to the area, which we have that need to get people to come into the park and help generate sales and keep the current attendance from lacking and being competitive with the other parks. If we don't keep up with anything that we do, then people tend to go to the other parks that we have. And the Rapids, for over the years, and the way they've been developed is we tend to always do a top-notch, high-quality, safe environment. And it's been like that. And in conjunction with that, we try to keep adding new rides, new facilities, and things to the park. So it's something fresh for people to come to. It's not always the same thing. It's just something new. But we have new rides. Last year, we added some new pavilions that we hope to get group sales in to bring more business out of Miami and the south of us to come and have gatherings and outings from that standpoint. We put in a retail facility. We've added private cabanas. We added a new ride last year, which is the Flow Rider. So we're constantly adding things, keeping the park up to date with the newest and best things that are out there. And again, this just helps us cement our place in the community and help business grow. With that said, I'll turn it over to Mr. Karen Burke. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
job. So if you have any questions, I'll be more happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We may have some more questions for you as we go through it. Okay. Any comments from the board, Mr. Cole? Yes. Just reading over and it's just some concerns or I haven't heard, and if it is, I'm interested in the protection of the city when it comes to the liability dealing with alcohol and kids around. Will the park have some type of waiver? Because if there is, for example, if there is a parent that come to your park and another individual who may have drank too much doesn't have full good judgment, is the city protected against or is there waivers that are signed by those visitors of the park to protect the city? So if a parent or object to the drinking, is there protection of a parent or the concern of a parent to say, I don't want drinking around my children or I want drinking around my kids? Or the people who are drinking, are they going to be walking all around the park? That's one of the things I'd like to know that's in place. I don't know fully the law of it, but just the protection of the city for one. And the concern that the staff said there is no concern at this time, what would happen if there's a concern that does arise to the forefront? What mechanism is in place to protect or to deal with those concerns if they do arise? Is there something like that in place? I'll answer part of your question for now. I think that I have to be answered by the Rapids group. As far as liability for the city's concern, I believe that since it's on private property, liability would be assumed by the Rapids themselves. If the situation were to arise that a parent disagreed with alcohol sales or alcohol use, they would really just have to choose to go elsewhere. The current proposal is to allow alcohol sales at this specific location at the Tiki Bar, but it could happen throughout the park. And other than waiting in lines without an alcohol beverage or obviously within the rides themselves or within the wave pool, there's basically free reign for alcohol throughout the park. But the city's protected, basically. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to ask a question for the Rapids. Is there going to be a certain confinement for adults that want to drink? I'm sure they're not going to be walking around the entire park with beer bottles in their hands. Yes, maybe I should introduce myself. My name's Karen Burke, and I'm the owner of the entity that owns and operates the Rapids. And just by way of personal background, from 1989 to 2005, I was the chairman and CEO of Six Flags, which we owned and operated 40 parks throughout both the United States and Europe, Canada, and Mexico. And amongst those very large theme parks, we also operated several water parks adjacent to or as part of those parks. So this is not a new issue to me in terms of having alcoholic beverage sales in the parks or controlling them and still maintaining a very family-oriented environment. And I'm happy to answer a lot of those questions. Very specifically, I think he answered properly. This is obviously private property, and so I don't think there should be any concern on the part of the city about any kind of liability to the city, regardless of what might occur. You should also understand that we take the safety very, very seriously. I mean, you know, if we think about priorities for our business, you know, safety is one, two, and three. I mean, there is, you know, we operate to the very highest standards, not only here, but at the other 10 facilities that we operate throughout the United States. 
um, all of which uh, also have liquor licenses. Um, as far as the environment, uh, and, I, and I would say this, we have a very substantial investment uh, in the rapids, and we're continuing to make investments, so we have a significant uh, economic interest uh, in the safe uh, operation and the reputation uh, and to avoid any incidents, uh, either in the water or otherwise. So we have a very significant economic stake as well as you know, a moral obligation uh, in that regard. Um, as far as uh, the manner in which we operate, I, I don't want to leave the impression that uh, our request for a liquor license and initially to build this tiki bar uh, is because we in any way want to change the nature or atmosphere of the park, uh, and certainly not uh, to create you know, a floating bar throughout the, the, the park. That, that's not the intent here. Uh, and I think um, Mr. Jones uh, was describing uh, every major park in Florida, every one of the Disney parks, every one of the SeaWorld parks, every one of the Universal parks, even Legoland, which I think most people would identify as a young children's park, all the liquor licenses. Uh, and so we are at a competitive disadvantage in terms of that position, and given the stature of the Rapids Water Park, we do compete with those parks for tourists. And so what we're really trying to do here is to provide <coughs> the adult customers an opportunity in a controlled way to purchase an alcoholic beverage. Um, and so I, I just want to be clear, this is not an attempt to create any kind of a nightclub atmosphere or, or anything that would be negative in terms of a family activity. Um, we, we are not going to allow any alcohol in any of the attractions, so there's no opportunity to walk into the wave pool with a drink or to be floating down the lazy river or to go up slides, so this is not going to be a situation in which um, we're having alcohol everywhere. Um, we will comply with every state and local rule in terms of the sale of the alcohol, in terms of people being appropriate age, we'll control that very carefully. I can tell you in the 40 parks that I operated at Six Flags and the 11 that we currently <coughs> operate, we've never had one incident in connection with this. And we have not had complaints from parents in terms of you know the presence of this. Just like I think if you think back on your experiences to the extent that you've gone to a Disney park, any of their water parks, wet and wild, you, you probably personally haven't come away saying, God, that's strange, or I didn't like that, or you know, maybe somebody did, but I, I don't think typically people would even think about it. Um, and so the same procedures that they operate under, I'm not going to say they're identical because every company does things a little bit differently, but by and large the industry standards and the way in which uh, we'll conduct this are going to be very standard across the board as those, as those parks do. Um, and they all have that same flexibility. They make their decisions about where they'll sell the alcohol from and what areas you're allowed to have it. And basically, to come back to the question when it was asked, you know, no comments. If, if to the extent that we were to see a situation and we would, you know, we would address it, we would make a decision to make a change. I mean, we have a vested interest. And of course, we're subject to you know, the police surveillance, the ABC, and everything else. So it's not like this happens you know, without regulation. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, I mean, let's, uh, let's just continue down this way. Ms. Brooks? Call four. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. James? Um, and my question is going to be directed at staff. I'm just a little concerned why that's even part of site plan approval to authorize the sale of alcohol. Yeah, it, this was an interesting situation. Um, the site plan approval was really for uh, an amendment to add the new uh, structure, the 800 foot tiki bar. Being that the zoning and future land use um, has a recreational um, appropriation to it, that's what triggered the additional approval um, that will ultimately need to come from city council in order for the facility to pursue the four COP license. So we're going to see this more in the future from different places, let's like say the marina, when they start, you know, filling in those um, leased areas we're going to have on our site plans? 
It's a unique situation, and we probably would not see it very often. Um, in the marina itself, um, the zoning and future land use would currently provide for restaurants, which would um, allow for that alcohol license. There, there are some constraints associated with that, but um, the situation that we're looking at now, considering now, is, is kind of unique. Okay, so essentially what he was saying is that the city doesn't have any liability because it's all private property. Is correct. that correct? Correct. Okay, my other question was, I was just kind of concerned because I know they have um, younger people that work there, so you have younger people that work there, so I guess they would not work in the areas that would serve the alcohol, and also because it is in a water park, how do you determine like, how do you ID when you're in a water park, when stuff is up in a locker, they're going to issue some type of bracelet or something color-coded when they come in? I'm just curious. My understanding for serving alcohol, I believe you have to be at least 18 years of age. Uh, oh, 18 to serve, 21 to drink. In order to serve, you have to be 18. Um, however, there may be younger employees. Um, as far as the operational specific details as far as, you know, it'd be something to get a wristband, um, that, that, you know, I don't know if that's a procedure that occurs in their other parks. Um, you know, typically, um, I, I would like to know because we are residents and we do frequent, you know, rapids. Yeah, I, I mean, I can just assure you that we'll be in complete compliance with appropriate age and everything else for the people that serve and the appropriate training for them. As far as anyone that wants to purchase alcohol, if they you know, need to show their ID, they have to show their ID, and they're not going to get served unless they show ID. And, you know, we do at times have systems in certain parts where we use the wrist bracelets, uh, but, you know, we're not going to shortcut that because some of these wallets in the locker, if they want to purchase alcohol, they're going to have to show appropriate ID. Okay, I'm not going to harp on that, that point since it's kind of unique. Um, I think the TP expansion is a great idea. So those are my comments. Yes. I have a couple, a couple of comments about your comments. Um, I know you're trying to stay competitive. How far away is your nearest competitor? Well, it, it really depends how you define the market. So, for instance, um, for group business, which we think is important, and, and I would point out that I think our efforts to attract groups, um, and what we mean by groups would be, think of any company, Think of uh, hospitals, organizations, city that want to bring out um, anywhere from 50 to 1,000 people for a group outing and, and uh, you know catered meal and to enjoy the park. It's an important, an important part of the business, um, and it's a part of the business that actually will bring more exposure to Riviera Beach in terms of companies that we're aggressively now soliciting. I've added an entire staff of salespeople. The park never used to try to do this type of business. This is a standard business that we do uh, at all our parks. Um, and it's an important business for Disney and others. Um, and so there's ancillary benefits to bringing those types of groups. We'll be competing with everybody for that. Lion Country, which has a liquor license. Uh, Zoo, which has a liquor license. So it isn't just competition for um, pure water parks or even theme parks, uh, Sequarium. So think of just about any uh, attraction or area that would do catered outings. Uh, we certainly um, will be competing very close locally for that. Um, you would be surprised, but even currently, probably over 20% of our business comes from Miami. Uh, that's a good distance and, and a, a fair distance from the north. So we're, we're actually, you know, we're a strong draw. So, you know, we look at it and we feel we compete with Orlando. And where we compete mostly with Orlando is any tourism into southern Florida has a decision to make as to whether they want to drive from Palm Beach County or Dade or, or wherever all the way to Orlando. And we are close by. And so one of the things we want to be is we want to be able to offer to the tourist travel traveler that, you know, the full experience, um, kind of the vacation experience. If you even think about that, if you were to go to the Breakers, you go to a lot of other places where there are cabanas and there's waitress service, we've added the cabanas, and so, you know, to be in a position where we can do that. So, 
we've got a lot of competition uh, for these segments, and we just want to be on an even playing field. A um, couple more things. What are you? It's been a long time since I've been out there, and I don't remember the hours. What are your hours now? Um, primarily, Brian, we're 10. 10 to 7 so, during the summer months. During spring break, it's 10 to 5. Okay. And are you going to extend those hours once you start alcohol? Not typically, because we're not, you know, lighted, really. So we, have, we aren't planning currently. I mean, our, our hours, you know, we certainly don't want to restrict our hours, but <coughs> this is not about changing our operating hours. This is about what we'll be doing in our normal operating hours. I don't mind telling you, I'm very concerned about the alcohol component. And I'm not a peacoater, but you know, Revere Beach has done a lot of work really hard to clean things up and now to add this alcohol component is something that's, you know, that's alcohol free. It's, it's troubling considering where it is. And, um, and I know adults go. What percentage of your, uh, what percentage of your business do you know for children versus adults? Um, I guess I would be standing on one foot here. I'd be guesstimating it, but I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, obviously, the weekend, the weekend, yeah. uh, is more families where during the weekdays it's, it's not as much, but the, the weekend's probably close to 50 50 on the right. families, mom, dad, and then a couple of kids. But on the weekdays, you know, more kids. Do you feel you're lagging behind now? Oh, I, I don't think there's any question that, you know, when we pitch group business and they ask whether we can, you know, have beer in the, in the group areas for totally adult events, and we have to say, no, we can't, but, you know, that union group can go to Lions Bar and do it. You bet we're lagging. And if I'm, you know, starting to now advertise as I am with billboards on 95, which, by the way, are, as you can see in the thing, advertising Riviera Beach, you know, I'm competing with the hotels around here. I'm competing with everybody. So I need to be in a position where I'm on an even playing field. Um, and, you know, frankly, while I respect the concerns, uh, I guess having been in the industry for 25 years, you know, having been the chairman and CEO of a major theme park company where we did this responsibly and where I don't think anybody thinks of the Six Flags Park as an irresponsible operation, and certainly Disney, uh, which is the gold standard, and you know, nobody gives that a thought. So I, I sort of, for one, don't wouldn't understand why we would be in a different position uh, than those companies. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hamilton? Yeah, I'll come back to Ms. Jackson uh, if she has any other questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, in 1995, the license were Duke license was given up. Does anyone know the reason why at that time? It, it had nothing to do with anything in the operation. Uh, I think that the, the owner at that time just decided that they it wasn't an area that they wanted to <coughs> to do anymore. I don't, I don't think there was a particular reason. So there, it, it wasn't it wasn't that something was going wrong and there was any problem. I and mean, I would say just the opposite. I think the board should have some comfort. Uh, that the park had and sold under a liquor license for two seasons without incident. <coughs> the passage indicate and to me imply that the sale of alcohol will be throughout the park, not necessarily restricted to the Tiki Hut. That's correct. Well, I, I, I think it I think it was the question um, that was asked by Ms. James that, you know, it is a little odd, you know, have the, the liquor license per se be part of zoning. I mean, so what we're, you know, one of the things we're here for is the tiki bar. Um, but we want to, you know, uh, be forthright to say that, you know, we may sell alcohol out of other food and beverage outlets uh, at the park. Uh, and, and we are a business that changes and shapes over, over time. So um, just like the Disney parks, the Universal parks, or the other parks, it's the same thing. They, they, they may dispense alcohol out of more than one restaurant. They have cabanas and you have waitress service. So um, there will be, you know, there will be sales of alcohol uh, that that are not just from the tiki bar. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean we're going to be, you know, trying to sell alcohol on every square foot of the property. I mean, it's just you know, we want to make sure that we're clear about, you know, what the license would allow us to do. As 
as Ms. James indicated, you probably already made projections of, as you indicated, the increase of your groups based upon the sale of such. However, you indicated to her you have not identified the method of how you're going to ID. And to me, if you're making plans to increase groups, and maybe that's just for adult functions when the park is closed or... Yeah, I mean, just to be clear, I mean, anybody that's served alcohol is going to have to provide ID that they're of age to purchase. And so, you know, I want to, again, maintain the flexibility. Sometimes we handle that differently with a group. If we have a large group, we may wristband so everyone is ID'd on the way in. So it just, you know, it's just that it can vary depending on what we're doing during the particular function. But I can't stress enough that we're going to be religious about supervising this. Not only the sale of it, you know, and who's selling on, you know, our customers, but also, you know, maintaining the family integrity of the park. Is Karen Burke here now? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Ms. Jackson, you're okay? Yes, I'm good. Just a couple of questions. That one, you said that all nine of your other parks have liquor... Ten. Ten additional parks. Okay. So you have a total of 11. Okay. They all have a liquor license? Yes. Any incidents of... No. Okay. Do you have security at the water park? Yes. Okay. And they would be part of the ID process and control process? As required. I mean, I think what we'll have is obviously well-trained bartenders, you know, who would probably be the front line on that. But there's no question that we have, you know, a strong security presence that, you know, as needed we... So we're in good shape there. Would this be run by the water park, by Rapids? Absolutely. Or by... Okay, not by an outside contractor? No, no. We would control all of that. Okay. I noticed an advertisement that you're opening this Saturday. When do you plan to start the construction of the Tiki? Well, you know, we obviously can't, as prudent businessmen, start the construction until, you know, we have the approval from the city, which would require, you know, this board's approval and then subsequently the city council. And I don't know when we would be on their docket, but hopefully in April if we were to be lucky enough to have that opportunity. And so we had hoped to begin construction in the fall, but, you know, obviously we need to go through the process. But we have a window where we could construct the Tiki Bar from the end of April, you know, until around June when the business picks back up. So we do have a window where we can do that. Okay. Have you given any thought to how many jobs this addition is going to create in the city? Well, you know, I mean, by definition, there will be several spots. I mean, I don't know that I actually counted them, but... I estimate between 12 and 15 for the Tiki. Okay. Plus the construction jobs. Okay. No other questions. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Sure. Yeah, Mr. Colton. Yes. Just that the first question when I asked if this one is dealing with staff and I didn't get a clear understanding of it, where on the item H it said no staff concern has been provided at this time. Well, my question was if and when there were concerns from staff, is there a mechanism in place that would be able to be negotiated between staff and the rapids? And how would you or how would staff know if there is ever a concern that comes up? But that particular portion of it, no concern at this time, but is there something in place to provide for if they're concerned in negotiation what the remedies would be between staff and rapids? And I'm good. Right. Currently when the staff report is being prepared, there were no comments provided by the police department or fire department. Both of those departments would obviously be on the forefront of any review or any potential instances as they would like to see the impacts much more than the engineering department or zoning department. 
as far as a condition to negotiate at a later point in time, there is no condition that's currently being discussed now. So there are obviously legal parameters that the business would have to operate in if not all of the four COP alcohol licenses were received, but there would be no additional condition. So if you have concerns later on, there's no mechanics that is in place to work that out? At this time, there's nothing in place? There's no clear conditions that are being put on the staff analysis or likely would be put on the city council approval. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. I would just like to emphasize based on the liability issues that have arisen, just to be clear, this is a private company. We're dealing with private property, so they bear the brunt of all liability, not the city. Also, we have a code enforcement department that if there were violations, code enforcement would assume some of the responsibility to do any kind of corrective action. So I think there is a mechanism in place if something goes awry to address it. No other questions from the board? I call for a motion. I think we need to read the entire. Yes. If you're going to make the motion, the entire. Yeah, sure. You have to state. Yeah, just. I'll make a motion that we approve the application from Ratchet Holding, LLC, requesting a site plan amendment for the Ratchet Water Park, including the construction of an 800 square foot, 65 seat tiki bar structure, and authorization to sell alcohol throughout the Ratchet Water Park, located at 6566 North Military Trail, on roughly 24.3 acres. Second. Want to call the roll? Everett Canuti? Yes. Michelle Bruce? Yes. Murray Davis? No. Brian Fulton? Yes. Kimberly Jackson? Yes. Arthur Hamilton? No. Motion passes four yes, two no, with Ms. Davis and Mr. Hamilton in the Senate. Thank you. Appreciate your time and good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Since there's no public comments, we'll go to correspondence. No correspondence. No correspondence. Any comments from Planning and Zoning Board? Mr. Colton? Brooks? No. Ms. James? Davis? No. Ms. Jackson? No. Mr. Hamilton? I just wanted to say thanks to staff for emailing certain things concerning training. However, I'm not sure if that was requested, but I do want to say thank you. Project update? No updates at this time. Yes. As you may or may not be aware, the recent vote on the 11th passed with 74. 73. 73%. 73%. 73% approval to amend the city charter, so we're going to try this moving forward. Okay. And you said the meeting is scheduled for the 27th, but possibly? At this point in time, I think it's probably a 40% chance we meet on the 27th. More likely would be to meet on the 27th. Okay. Move to adjourn? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a quick question, and I'm not sure if this should go to staff. We have a chair, and I guess I should have said thanks to the chair. Excuse me. Thank you. We have a chair that needs to be out of town, and I think it's a little bit late to discuss this with you. I don't know what you need to do about it. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
himself online, et cetera, to serve him or any member who might be able to be here telepathically, if that's such a term, or via telephone? Is that possible? Is that something to be considered? That way, you know, I may not have to move on to. We like your book. Technology definitely exists to do new things like that. I don't know about the legality about actually being at the meeting versus just attending via Skype or some sort of video conferencing technology. It's an interesting idea, but yeah, it'd be interesting to look at that further. We are moving into the 21st century, and I doubt that that would be an appropriate question to get a response from, either from legal or staff. Ms. Stubbs? Mr. Chair, generally what I've seen in the past, and I can look further into it, is that good cause has to be provided because the meetings are open to the public, and the public gets an opportunity not only to be heard, but be heard in the presence of the committee, council, board. So generally, from what I've seen from past case law, generally good cause has to be shown. So, for example, someone is in a hospital and unable to attend for some reason or something of that matter, but generally it's not a method that's used on occasions simply because someone cannot make a meeting. It generally has to be good cause on why they cannot make the meeting. Okay. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. So moved. I'll miss it, too. I couldn't leave. We need a second. We do need a second. Okay. Great. Dave, a second. Okay. Y'all have a wonderful evening. You, too. Good meeting, everybody. All the water parks and all about all the I was going to ask them if they thought the Barracuda Bay was coming. I know. I don't know what they did. Oh. Yeah. 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 Ye